DDG episode 84. My name is Dave Hunt and I'm joined by Michael Swick. How's it going, Dave? We're, we're a little, little chaotic today as we I had to do a new setup and you're dealing with your new setup. Yeah. Uh, mine's more temporary, though. <laughs> and I'm sick. So. Yeah, and you're sick. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're here. We're here. We're doing it live still. I have right now, I I'm got my laptop on my dresser. Uh, so the camera quality is not great. The angle is not flattering. Uh, and I have my lamp, which is on the floor with the lampshade off. And then I have a makeup mirror on just to get any sort of lighting in my bedroom. Cause it's like 93 degrees out in Chicago. And when we do these early recordings, I'm usually in the kitchen on my laptop, but that's right next to the AC. And I could not turn off that AC today, <laughs> like at all. Yeah, this is my Could fault. Not risk so it. there's enough stuff going on with work and other things, and as well as uh, it's, it's softball season, and I'm not looking forward to playing a game in 90 degree temperature. But you know, much like this, uh, much like DDG, when I commit to something, I try to do everything in my power to to meet those commitments. And and uh, I still want to play ball, even though I'm sick. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, thankfully, I don't think I'm playing the outfield today, so I won't have to run. Um, but uh, if I sound a a little bit more raspy or or uh, scratchy than normal. I apologize uh, if you get a cough that get that that gets in there on the live stream or on the audio. Uh, I'm sorry. We'll try to edit it out as best as we can. But it's important to Michael and myself to to produce regular, consistent weekly content. Um, so, with all that said, um, all the links are in the show notes. I'm not going to be long winded with that today at all because uh, I don't have the strength to do it. Uh, leave us a review. That would be appreciated. Thank you. And we're going to throw it over to some news, and this is going to be 99% the Michael show, and I'll chime in here and there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was this, we're this close to me just doing a solo show <laughs> at a certain point, but we're here. So uh, let's cover... Luckily, because E3 is next week, there's not a ton of stuff to call, t- talk about. Uh, the first story Dave is going to be very interested in. Uh, I think we're going to have <laughs> different, different opinions on, on all of this stuff. But here we go. Uh, Herman Host did a Q&A with the PlayStation blog, so not through Wired, which has become their go-to. But there was a PlayStation blog. It was pretty in-depth, but it wasn't like crazy long. I believe it was just like a transcript of an audio interview for the PlayStation blog podcast, if I'm not mistaken. But in this Q&A, a uh, couple little things came out of it. Uh, ben Studio is working on a new IP, which we you know, found out through Jason Trier like a month ago, but this is confirming they're working on a new IP. They tweeted as much uh, as soon as this was posted right. that they are going to, to do that. Good to hear. You know, I mean, it doesn't mean like Ben's going away and they're working on a new IP, so they're not working on a remaster. Yeah, or an auxiliary uh, studio. Yeah, they're doing their own thing. Uh, they probably still are helping out other studios because that's just how PlayStation has worked with a lot of their studios. So good to hear that. Uh, Asobi, the Astrobot team is officially a PlayStation studio. I guess they were like an unofficial team, like not a full actual team. Cause they were just like an arm of the Japan studio, mm-hmm. but they are a full studio. And it sounds like they are starting to hire up to have like a proper Tokyo I headquarters. I feel like this was kind of announced when they said studio Japan was closing. Uh, they, or they, they said they would least, move people yeah. to Team Asobi, but it never meant that like Team Asobi was going to be like its own thing. Okay. But I guess, I guess this is the first formal announcement. Everything has been informal of right. just like, hey, this is a studio, but it, we're not going to like put them on a graphic that says PlayStation Studios until this point. Now they're going to be on that graphic with talking about like here are all of our studios. Right. So the um. Other thing that came from this is God of War has been delayed to 2022. Shocking. Along with Gran Turismo, which me and Dave <laughs> have probably been one of many people that have been like, yeah, this is not coming out this year. So that's <laughs> not, it's not a crazy story that that it's been delayed. Uh, the studio confirmed it like, hey, we wanted to take time uh, to put this together and give like the best experience possible. Uh the thing that I know Dave is going to be bothered by is obviously we know Horizon's coming to PS4. That was known, but God of War is coming to PS4, and so is Gran Turismo 7. They are all going to be PS4, PS5 games. And in Horizon, they are trying to have it ready for this year, but they won't make a commitment to it. But God of War would be next year, and Gran Turismo would be next year. Though, 
based on Gran Turismo's track record that probably will slip into 2023, depending on how big of a game they're trying. Though it's been a while since Gran Turismo Sport, yeah, uh, which never felt like a full Gran Turismo game. So they probably are closer to being done than anything. Uh, or not done, closer to release than what we're used to from a Gran Turismo uh, game. But PS4 for God of War and Gran Turismo 7. Dave, I'm sh- you had hot takes <laughs> on, on Twitter, uh, but go um, for it. So the we've known about Horizon the whole time. Like, um, yeah. essentially, since it was in that blog post. My biggest problem, like the root of my problem that I have with this, is that I genuinely feel like Sony is hiding things from the consumers. Um, like, is is it, does it make business per- sense and perspective to release these games on PS4? Yeah, absolutely. We just, you read that data last week that said like 90% of Sony's um, money is, um, you know, their game sales are coming from PlayStation 4. So this 100% yeah. makes sense from a business perspective. And, and I understand this. Um, what I don't like is the like I mentioned before the the hiding. Um, I don't think that they're lying to people. I just think that they're hiding stuff, and we're not finding it out about it until later. Um, now I feel like almost everything that was shown, almost like I, I, just a rough number, if like they showed ten different things at the the future of gaming event last June, I feel like eighty percent of those are coming to PS4 as well. So I don't really consider that to be the future of gaming. Um, they and, were games that came out into the future, though. Yes, so. I, I, they, like, they got you on a technical term. And then if you really go back, and I started doing some reading, if you really go back and read like what Jim Ryan said about believing in generations, if you really read what he wrote or what he what he quoted was quoted, um, he was talking about you know giving experiences that couldn't be given on other consoles. And PlayStation Five is doing that with the Dual Sense and the three D audio and things like that. Um, but. I, I just feel I feel like they again hit it from the consumer of like at this point in time we were always talking about prior to launch why do I need an Xbox like I can do stuff on a PC I can do all this stuff on an Xbox One like what do I need an Xbox for and we all thought all of us thought um, a PlayStation Five you play it for the new stuff that's coming that's only going to be on PlayStation Five um, and it just doesn't feel like and it was it, it's swirling around today again with. Um, Ratchet and Clank reviews hitting today, and it sounds like it's reviewing really, really well. Um, but now we're we don't have another date for a PS5 only PlayStation Studio game. We don't. Yeah, not not for not for a while. We don't and... have it. We don't have another game coming out that's PS5 only. Um, it's and I don't I I just I I don't like it and 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 again it's my opinion and and I feel like I want and I and it's the same thing I want Xbox to do like and and I've said it prior to even getting my hands on both the consoles is like I want reasons to play with my new hardware and I don't want to I do I think that God of War is going to be a bad game because it's on PS4 no do I think that there is some mechanic that they want to put into the game that they won't be able to because it's on PS5 absolutely because it's on PS4 and PS5 like there's something that Sony Santa Monica wants to do that they can't do there's something that Gorilla wants to do that they can't do um, and it just it and and now there's something polygamy and, and and if you don't believe me or you don't think that I'm right like that's fine that's your prerogative polygamy had to take something out of Gran Turismo polyphony polyphony sorry had to take something <laughs> out of Gran crazy. Turismo sorry. Gran Turismo we it's been reported yeah. all week that it was supposed to be a PS5 only game so now if they're if they've been told that you need to make this available on PS4 as well they had to remove something from the game well i so i kind of disagree just a little bit when it comes to like Gran Turismo and Horizon because of the way those games are structured. I doubt there would be anything crazy that would need to be removed, especially for like Gran Turismo. You, you don't think Gran would Turismo it, was relying on the SSD at all for, for dynamic no, weather or loading well, or uh, number of cars or or how the, well, I like mean, the draw it, it, distance? The SSD can't make, you know, it, it can handle, help make loading better, but it's not going to be doing stuff that's going to be like Oh, we're we're gonna lose amount of cars or the amount of detail in the cars because of the SSD. Uh, that's that's raw horsepower stuff. I think Gran Turismo, of these three games, is probably the only one that probably could get away with being cross gen without losing many features because it's just like make the cars pretty. Why Very did they linear do it in the things. First place, then? What do you mean? Why didn't they? You know, why has it been? You know, if if it was one of the ones that was easy enough to cross gen, why didn't? Why wasn't it cross gen? And now it is now it, it it's being reported that it was PS5 only, and now that they've been told to develop for the PS4 as well. I think that's bad messaging. But I'm saying like of the games that 
are on this list, the games that suffers the least from being crossed in is going to be Gran Turismo because it is a racing game. They're racetracks. You're just really... You just dial back stuff for this type of game. I think that's why, like, God of War would probably suffer the most because mm -hmm. there are instances of God of War on PS4 where you see they had to cut corners on the PS4. I don't think you're, you know, in terms of, like, how the game is structured, you know, those weird little, like, loading between worlds where you're just, like, right. walking through a path in a circle that's something that needed to happen uh the very specific ways that kratos would have to like go through walls or doors so they can load new areas that's something that could have been fixed on ps5 that can't be gran turismo you're you're driving in a circle the only thing that's really going to be affected are how pretty the game can be or at least in my opinion they're not going to do anything crazy with gran turismo it's just gonna be like yeah, I, look I at how I detailed really know enough is. racing enough about racing games to like dig into that but i feel like anytime that you're adding a different version of hardware into your development like it's impacting it. it 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 impacts it it could benefit but in reality they're they could just downscale I, I don't we've heard it from it many developers it at all like I, I just don't feel like it benefits it at all to to have to to have to develop for the prior gen especially when I development mean, started on ps5 hardware only initially Oh, well, we don't even know if it initially started well, that way I, we, when, we, the way it was presented was an, uh, at first was it was going to be a ps5 only experience but it's, it, it, the way PlayStation has been running, I wouldn't be surprised if this was the plan day one. They were just hoping right. to pimp out and sell as many PS5s as they could. And then they hit us with that news. Based on how everything's going. Mm -hmm. I can That's see, the part that I feel like that they're hiding. And again, yeah, yeah. And I, and I can I, totally see I that don't think that Sony is lying to us. I don't think that Microsoft is lying to its consumers. I don't think that anybody's lying to anybody. I think one company is going, hey, you know what? we this isn't going to work like you know like we we don't believe in 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 generation gating people and that's xbox whether you know like and and xbox hasn't released a game <laughs> so yeah. like like that, that that's their own problem as well sony has released three <laughs> demon demon um, souls returnal and ratchet will be out this week and miles but miles ran on ps4 but it's a significant difference, though. You can right. at least see, and it's gonna what... be. It looks like there's gonna be a significant difference on for Horizon. Like the, the developer came out and um, talked about some of that stuff, and th th those are those are reasons to have a PS5. But are they enough to make somebody that's maybe already on the fence try to get a PS5? And right now, I don't. R Ratchet. It sounds like Ratchet might be the case, but I'm sorry. Like to the average consumer, one game isn't enough right now because now we're talking about when do you think god of war is going to come out god of war is going to be probably late 2022 early 2023 okay so now we're talking 24 That's what to I think. 24 to 28 months after your new system came out you're releasing something on your old system like that's crazy they specifically in the blog post were like there's 110 million ps4s out like god of war 2 came out a year or two into the release of the ps3 and on the ps2 like it's not unheard of that the last gen gets a game yeah one deep in, like not four hmm? yeah, but it's just <laughs> i i really think that these games will come out probably before 2023 so we're talking about like two years into it i think the pandemic did fuck a lot of things yeah. up to where they're just trying to squeeze whatever money they can out of the stuff I don't think this is going to greatly affect the quality or the potential for Gran Turismo 7. And honestly, when it comes to like Horizon, I don't think it's going to really affect Horizon because I don't think they were going to do anything crazy from no, I, one game I, to I, the other. I agree with what you're saying. Like, and, and, and that's the part that I want to make sure that I'm not conveying is confusion. Um, is Horizon has been developed on PS4. Horizon 2 has been developed on PS4 and is now being upscaled to PS5. And it appears that God of War is the same thing. Hey, we're going to hit these benchmarks on PS4, and that means that we can do these benchmarks on PS5. Cool. Great. I it, Reading into it myself, and again, I don't know enough about it, is that um, Polyphemy was told PS5, allegedly was told PS5, and now they're being told, hey, you got to make it work on PS4, which means that they have to essentially, in theory, kind of downscale their game, right? A little? Yeah, they... They yeah. can downscale. From from what we've been told from developers, downscaling is way easier than, uh, you know, doing two different versions of the game. So it's totally possible. The only thing that sucks, though, is, like, the PS4 is chugged running, like, 
Horizon. God of War 2018. Yeah. Horizon. Uh, so those pro, you were you were talking about it sounds like your pro was gonna hover. Like Yeah, but it ran the games better. Let's say like PS yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. talking about just the base PS4. Yeah. Those are gonna struggle significantly running these games. And it's gonna be up to Sony to not run into like a cyberpunk scenario uh-huh. where they need to keep a certain quality. Will that hurt a game like God of War? Definitely. Because God of War I think what we're seeing, like specifically, like especially with how the reviews went from like Ratchet and everything, is Ratchet is the first game from PlayStation Studios, if you don't count Returnal, uh, that is really showing off the power of the hardware. And I think linear games you can do with a lot more with mm-hmm. in terms of showing off the new hardware. And I was really looking forward to seeing what God of War can do on new hardware. But now it's since it's going to have to be cross gen they can't get as fancy as they wanted to while something like gran turismo is a racing game there's only so much they can do other than make it pretty horizon open world game that already has like a pretty set standard and didn't really show any like well they've already come out and said there's certain things that um the ps4 player is only going to get in cutscenes. like they've yeah yeah in terms of like a graphic graph fidelity or um well it, well it was like the the lighting yeah. the fancy lighting is only in cutscenes on the ps4 and it's in everything on yeah. ps5 uh so there's horizons in a spot where it's just like with what they were creating it's just going to be like visual downgrades for the ps4 god of war could have done some crazy things that i think we're seeing in like ratchet and clank yeah, I, I uh, think that I, that they can't I, do anymore. And again, it's just pure speculation on my part. But <coughs> sorry, um, I feel like Atreus, if they had aspirations or goals, I'm assuming Atreus is in this game as well. Um, I think they yeah. said they were continuous to tell the Kratos and Atreus journey. Um, there could be, you know, as as annoying as it's been, of like when you played The Last of Us and you played as Joel and then Ellie's AI, and then you played, you know, Atreus's AI as well. Like there were certain things that were like, okay, that's a little irritating. Those are still going to be there because it can't be on PS5 only. That yeah, hopefully and, they and, could have been gone if it was only on PS5. And I that's why I keep saying, like, of the three games that are going to be cross-gen, I think God of War suffers the most. I think Gran Turismo will be fine because it's just going to be visual upgrades and details. Right. And Horizon, I think, is coming out soon enough that it kind of doesn't matter. We God hope. of War is the one that's perplexing. <laughs> I think I think Horizon's either coming out this holiday or it's coming out like february right like it'll be their their spring game but like god of war it will either next year or next summer we'll get like hey we canceled the ps4 version or hey it's coming out at the end of the year and it's gonna be like it's still gonna be a good game still gonna have a great story uh but it's gonna be very similar to what we got on the ps4 god of war because it's coming to the ps4 yeah uh so th- we won't get like reading the reviews for ratchet seeing videos of ratchet Ratchet gets to do some cool ass shit because they're on PS5 yeah. hardware and didn't have to worry about anything else. And it's a linear game, so you can do a lot more cool shit. But I'm just when you're I, I get that funneling the de- people through. Obviously, the development or what Ratchet is doing can only be done on PS5. But why wasn't Insomniac given the pressure to make it on PS4 as well? Like, and why, I think because why is- they 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 pushed Insomniac to to really Spider Man cross gen and that could have been a compromise between studios of just like, okay, well we want to do crazy shit for Spider-Man, but we won't so we can get it on PS4, but let us do uh, like ratchet. I think insomniac has hit the naughty dog level for Sony where they get to call their own shots. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I'm not saying Santa Monica doesn't have that, but Santa Monica might not have had it yet. I mean, or specifically Santa Monica, wasn't doing anything crazy that they could make a case why it needed to be on PS5 only. Like, I'm sure the Sony studios are like, what do you want to do? Okay, is this something that you absolutely need to do? Or can we put it on last gen and sell way more copies? Right. And and they have to examine everything that way uh, as, as long as they can, especially until they get to the point where people can just walk into a store and buy a PS5. Yeah. The I think that's is, also yeah. holding it. The messaging is just confusing as well. Like, I didn't realize this, and this is my fault, and it's ignorance on my part. But if you buy Immortals on PS5, like you buy a physical disc of Immortals Phoenix Rising or um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, um, 
and you put it in a PS4, it doesn't work. But you put a PS4 disc in a PS5, and it works, even though they're, yeah, but they, they're the same I, game. There's not a no, PS, know, there's but, not a PS5 version of Immortals. But that's been the case for years. You've never been able to put a new disc into your old system. I know, but uh, you but you didn't you never saw you never saw the same game on a PS in a PS2 box and in a PS3 box or a PS3 box I and mean, a PS4 box. But that but that's like saying you know like oh I put my uh, Madden Xbox One in my Madden. 360 and it didn't work why not like but it didn't but that when they're next to each other that's what i'm saying is that like there's they're not different like what's on the disc that's different it has nothing. the uh nothing it it has the patches <laughs> built into it <laughs> like I, I i get it but i mean and again it's xbox and 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 i know yeah i get it like every time i talk about xbox like yeah they got their ass kicked last generation i understand that i don't live under a rock but you know you you put in there's very very few xbox series only disc i think it's 2k and maybe madden um that but they're they're essentially two skews and at this point in time like i hate to say it but release two different versions of god of war Release a seventy dollars version and a sixty dollars version, and tell me why one costs ten dollars more than the other. It's going to be, hey, this has better, better lighting. This is uh, better and, fidelity. And I'm, I'm okay with that. And but that's what the case is going to be. It's going to be two different SKUs, and it's not going to be though. You're going when you buy it digitally, you're going to buy the PS4 or PS5 version. No, you're gonna. I guarantee, forgot a war. You're going to be buying a PS5 version if you want it maybe you'll be able to buy like a digital deluxe edition that will let you buy both but it'll it's they're going to be two different SKUs. so do you think if you uh, go to the store at holiday 2022 and god of war is out there's a ps4 box and a ps5 box yes okay yeah why why yeah there definitely will be especially by then there'll be ps5s to buy so there'll definitely be and then retail employees or retail companies are going to have to do the thing they do every gen where once one starts to sell a little bit more, the shelf for the previous gen just gets smaller and smaller. Right. Uh, to where there I, will I just, be no advertisement like for Yeah, God you're of just War. confusing your customers. And I hate it. And well, maybe, and, it's, maybe and it's my background in retail. Like, and I, I just hate it. But based on how, like, it's worked for electronic retailers, you know, video game retailers, you just make the last gen shelf smaller and smaller until it just disappears. And then it's just the bargain bin. So that's probably how it's going to go it we're probably going to end up in a situation like with the the wii uh was it the the wii u and the switch zelda where it was really hard to find the wii u zelda because yep. they didn't make as many they made sure they had switch copies in store and you had to order the the wii u version like online uh to get it so it's probably going to be that scenario where they just don't carry the last gen game if ps5 can get their or sony can get the stocks of ps5s at a comfortable level where they can feel comfortable doing that. Uh, but I think that's a, a reasonable scenario to, to, to come across by the time God of War comes out, like based on all the estimates we've heard right. uh, for the, uh, the, the drought ending, hopefully in 2022. Do you think we're going to go through all of 2022 without a PS5 first party experience? Um, no, I'm sure one of the, uh, one of the other studios will have something. I'm sure Naughty Dog will release some sort of news about their next thing. Um, I would have to look at all their studios again. Uh, I have a feeling we'll probably get a lot of information on various studios, but I think we'll probably get Gran Turismo next year for sure. I, I have a feeling we might actually get Gran Turismo before God of War. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I'm talking about a PS5 only game. Um, let me look at their studios. I would have to look at it thing because the only problem is they released too many things towards the end of last gen, uh, which is a shame. But yeah, uh, I mean that's the, I can the... see Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> so Insomniac yeah. within the first twenty four months of the generation being out, will have released three games. Two of the three will be PS five only. Yes, I I feel like Insomniac's the only one that could do it, especially because Spider Man. Uh, is this going to be in New York again? So that gives him a lot right. of like they already built New I, York. I, but so I, it's I still think it'll be focused. it'll be funny though because I think whether it's good you know good bad or indifferent right or wrong I think the consumer will be upset. Wait a minute, God of War 
2 is coming to PS4, but Spider-Man 2 isn't coming to PS4, and it's just in New York again. Like, like I, I don't know. I, I, I hope, like, I, I want PS5-only experiences. I want Xbox One-only experience, Xbox Series-only experience, sorry. Um, those are, like, I want those things. I want reasons to, to, to push the hardware. Um, but I, I think it'll yeah. be... It'll be very interesting if we go the next twelve to fourteen months without a PS5 only first party experience. Like that'll be kind of crazy. Um, I wonder how on. I know Pixel Puss are. They just there was rumors that they're they're working with like Sony Films to work on something, uh, for their next game. So I'm wondering if they would end up being the next in line because um. This goes for Ubisoft huh? and everything too. By the way, like Ubisoft yeah. releasing Far Cry Six and Rainbow Six. Extraction, um, the, yeah. that you know, like th- these are all going to work on prior gen. Like I want, I, I want next gen experiences, and and I and I was hoping that there would be more. Like I understand that COVID and the pandemic is a thing, but I was hoping that we would know a little bit more, even if they're delayed. Like I just want to know, because like I like what do you, what's your first feeling? Gotham Knights is going to be on both platforms too, then right? Uh, yeah, and that's just Warner just being a mess, and we'll talk yeah. about Gotham Knights in just a, a minute or two. Same thing, Suicide uh, Squad is going to be next-gen only? We don't know, especially now that it's been delayed again. So right. it's kind of hard to tell what that's going to be. Yeah. A lot of studios are going to have to decide. I think uh, the pandemic did just did a huge number on uh, release dates for a bunch of stuff. And then I also think Cyberpunk plays a factor yeah. in that as well, which can be Absolutely. blamed pandemic-wise of just like people saw what cyberpunk did and now they're just like okay we cannot be the next cyberpunk uh so by all accounts cyberpunk ran okay on ps5 yeah yeah it ran okay but like everything on the platform that matters the ps4 the biggest platform in the world it was a fucking train wreck so i think a lot of companies looked at that and were like we can't over rely on roadmap patches you know well, yeah, like somebody, cyberpunk somebody wasn't the chat first goes, game somebody chat goes naughty dog might do it let's wait for e3 and see sony's not doing anything at e3 <laughs> so. yeah we might get something from sony i think the rumor is july or august yeah. but i don't think it's going to be anything big i, I mean, think and to be fair now it feels like the e3 window goes like mother's day to labor day <laughs> yeah no it totally is it, it, it's basically the <laughs> nfl like training camp it's the, season it's the to, summer it's, oh it's the first day of may yeah. it's the start of e3 and uh the day after labor day e3 is over like what yeah. Um, I'm sure we'll hear something in July, but I think it's going to be like, hey, here's a look at Kenna. Horizon with a release date. Yeah. Here's Kenna. Here's, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the Bethesda games, the pair of Bethesda games, Ghostwire yeah. and, and Deathloop. And it's just going to be stuff like that. Um, maybe we'll finally get our first look at God of War, but I don't expect gameplay. I expect another uh, like c- cinematic story trailer or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, maybe we get a hint at what Naughty Dog is working on, uh, but I well, have a feeling the next it's going to be list, factions. The remastered, like, is, like now, like, yeah, which which sounds so weird because it was like they gave it to part of Naughty Dog, but Naughty Dog is working on something bigger than you, that. Okay, if it's you know because you're the second or third person that's brought up factions, do you think that Naughty Dog has the potential to release a quote unquote games as a service multiplayer game only by itself? Well, I don't know if it's going to be a games as a service, but I I see them releasing factions in partnership with whatever studio <laughs> it's got to come out with a remake though right it's got to come bundled with the remake. i think so i yeah. i think i think you 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 release it as uh an add-on to anyone that already owns the game on ps4 and then you package it on a disc with the boxed copy of last of us on ps5 but that's okay like and then does last of us remastered only work on ps5 um I would imagine so, since it's already been remastered on PS4. Okay. Um, is, which I is factions only then playable on PS5? No, no, no. I, so I think factions will just be added to Last of Us Part Two on whatever platform Last of Us Part Two is on. But I, I could see them repackaging Last of Us Part <laughs> Two on PS5. Okay. Not like a full remake or anything or any work the done 60, to it. Sixty frame version or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. like, hey, here's a box you. copy that comes with factions. I got you. I think that's how that would play. Uh, but Last of Us Remastered, I feel like they can't do two remasters on the same system uh, for that game. Even though the first Last of Us Remastered, the original remaster of that, uh, was kind of bare bones in right. terms of what they did. 
but I don't think they can get away with releasing like right. two remasters on the PS4. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff Sony can announce, but it's just a matter of like when it's going to be ready. And if we want to go back into the cycle, like we want stuff announced, but we also at the same time, like I don't, we put I don't, Sony I don't, in a, I don't want something announced tomorrow that next week and somebody like I'd, I'd I'd be pissed if I see a trailer next week and at the end of it it goes 2024 I'll be like come on no and exactly that's <laughs> yeah. but that's the position Sony's in with like people like you and me where we want stuff announced but we also don't want to wait a while yeah. and Sony's at the point where it's just like you can't have both <laughs> like shit happened last year yeah. you can't have both and that's the and, that's the like the wild card that Bethesda that's that's been Bethesda's like mo of like, hey, here's a game that we're announcing in June, and then we're all like, oh, cool, this will be out next year. And they're like, November first this year. What? <laughs> like, yeah. Now, great. Like, you know, arguably, it's a fifty fifty chance if it's going to be a buggy mess or not. But yeah, and who knows how Microsoft might affect Bethesda in terms of like, hey, uh, we can't really shit this buggy, right. you know. <laughs> Uh, especially how they're working on like to make sure Halo Infinite is as perfect as possible. They're probably looking at Bethesda like, yeah, no, we can't have right. the first Bethesda game to come under the Microsoft umbrella be a buggy mess. So right. I'm sure everything Bethesda wise is going to get like be put under a microscope and given extra time. All right, I will let you take these next two stories, and I'll try to be more quiet so I don't cough on the mic again. Okay. All right. Uh, Warner Brothers gave an E3 update. A little disappointing. Uh, we're getting a lot of like all the E3 stuff that's been brought up or put on the schedule. We've just been getting reports of like, don't expect all these things that you want at these events to be there. And Warner Brothers said they are only showing Back for Blood. Uh, they told Tech Radar they're only showing Back for Blood during Game Fest E3, whatever. And there will be no Hogwarts Legacy. There will be no Gotham Knights. There will be no Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad to me makes sense because we don't know when that's really coming out other than like a vague window. Hogwarts Legacy lost its director. So I understand why that might take a little bit longer. Gotham Knights is the only one that's like a little confusing because that was supposed to come out already. Wasn't the studio, this publisher, supposed to have its own press conference this year? No, last year last they were year. supposed to okay. have it. All right, well, uh, which yeah, would have made the sense. The DC fandom thing when they announced Suicide Squad, yeah. they announced Gotham Knights, they announced Hogwarts. Okay, yeah. So it would have made sense last year, and then this year they're just like, we'll just have Back for Blood, uh, which they're only publishing. It's not an internal studio developing it; they're only publishing it. I, I applaud but... their transparency, though. To be fair, mm -hmm. like coming out beforehand and saying it, and not having to release a statement like after the event, and everybody going, "What the hell? Like, where's this, 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 and this? Like, this is I'm okay with this." Because you're setting yeah, you're, I'm, you're I'm, setting the consumer's expectations. You're not hiding something. Yeah, yeah, you're not hiding something. You're just setting expectations. And I think that's what a lot of publishers were seeing. You know, like Coach Media, Deep Silver, were like, don't expect Time Splitters, don't yeah. expect Saints Row. I was super don't disappointed when I this. saw that, but I'm like, okay, that's fair. Yeah, it's like, at least tell me so I don't get overexcited. Um, I mean, we're seeing it more and more. Nintendo's been doing that anytime they put up one of their directs the day before they'd be like this is what we're talking about chill playstation's done a good job of like this is exactly what we're talking about uh and then i'll just mention the next one uh ubisoft basically said here's what to expect and here's what's not going to be there and we're getting more and more stuff uh but back to warner brothers for a second i'm still surprised though that gotham knights was supposed to be out this year and it was only delayed a couple months ago right is not going to make any presence but i think dc fandom might come back this year so i'm guessing we'll get i wonder how uh, that works five. though like in terms of like who really controls the power in that situation though does warner brothers control the power or does dc control the power or specifically because they were just sold dc uh, discovery right now own that power so i they're just kind of a mess right now i guess so is this part of that mess of like, we don't know who's running us anymore. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But still, I, I would have, I would have thought we would have gotten like a gameplay thing since the game was supposed to be out already right. for Gotham Knights. But it makes you wonder like like how long happening. this delay really is going to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it sucks. And, and it, then again, it sucks, <laughs> but I want it to be really good. Like, I, I mean, it, yeah. I'm, I'm okay waiting. I just, you know, like kind of like what we just talked about a couple minutes ago, like, Maybe they announced it a little too early. like Yeah, and, but then they're also in a spot where 
they can't release it too close to Suicide Squad. Right. I know they're two different games, but I don't think you can release them in the same holiday period. Right. I, I barely think you can release them in the same year uh, without, you know, burning out fans, even though they're two different style of like third person action games. Uh, Ubisoft also went out and basically said, uh, you'll see Far Cry 6, Assassin's Creed Valhalla DC, a few surprises, and then Rainbow Six Extract, I believe is the new name, uh, which is for quarantine. So they said, expect those games and a few surprises. I think they were specific and said one surprise, and I saw it on websites that said a few surprises. Uh -huh. But they said no Division 2 DLC info, no Division Heartland info, and so no Prince of Persia remake. And then so they, Prince of Persia no came out and said, like, next year. Yeah, so if you remember, they showed it at an Ubisoft Forward last year, and people were like, this remake looks yeah, like they shit. They showed it at a Ubisoft Forward, and, and they dated it for January 2021. And then yeah. it looked terrible, and they said, okay, well, we're, we're delaying we'll put more it effort into this. To put more effort into it. And then they came out like this week or this month and said, well, we'll you know, like it's not coming in 2021. And people were like, whoa. Like, it, it, people yeah. are like, at the same time, they're like, wow. But then they're like, okay, well, you know, like maybe it really needs to get right. Which Ubisoft is one of those companies that are totally willing to lay something as long as yeah. they need to to get it done. And if it comes out broken, they will support it for an unreasonable amount of time, yeah. uh, especially if it, it. catches like success. They, they'll support yeah. it and fix it. That's the difference. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like there's a lot of rumors of like a PvP free to play multiplayer game that's going to like take Ghost Recon uh, and Division and Splinter, and Cell, Splinter Cell mechanics. Cell. And people are like, can we just get a Splinter Cell game, please? Yeah, people want a Splinter Cell game, but like Ubisoft saying that they're going to focus more on free to play experiences, it just makes sense for them to take Splinter Cell free to play in a multiplayer environment. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure Ubisoft, like any company, even though Rainbow Six. Uh, is doing so well for them. They have to know the game is like what, like seven years old now. Yeah. <laughs> that eventually they're gonna have to retire that and move on to something else. So them going free to play with a Splinter Cell Rainbow Six kind of going free to play with a, with a tactical shooter to learn from it to make a Rainbow yeah. Six free to play correct. Like exactly. I, like they're gonna use this as a guinea pig. Yeah, they've been, how, they've been how using long? For Honor as a guinea pig too. In terms of like, I think that they've got a ton of data from For Honor in terms of what players are willing to do and aren't willing to do, what they are willing to pay for, what they aren't willing to pay for, along with Rainbow Six as well, Rainbow Six Siege. Um, and then they'll, you know, like I'm sure, like as much of a of a flop as it was, the the Battle Royale they released, I can't think of the name of it right now, but um, Hyperscape. Yeah, that's right. I'm sure that they got more stuff from there. Um, as well as like what works and what doesn't work, and then they'll you know they'll put some big names behind it, and then they'll figure out again what's you know what you know how is this working? Let's adjust. Let's fix. How fast can we patch something? And then they'll be like, okay, here's the big, here is our competitive, new next generation Rainbow Six Siege style game, and it's free to play. Yeah, and that that has to be their 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 process <laughs> going forward or their plans. Because I just looked it up, like, Siege came out 2015. Mm -hmm. Like, that game, multiplayer games like that can last a long time, but at a certain point, you know, the return on investment dwindles down that you have to look at the next thing. So, them focusing on free-to-play, it makes sense for them to look at Splinter Cell. It will piss a lot of Splinter Cell fans off, but it also will bring a lot of Splinter Cell fans into checking out this new thing. Mm -hmm. Even... Is Ubisoft is basically going to have to make a bet on themselves that they are going to make something really good that even pissed off Splinter Cell fans that hate play it will get addicted to and then want to support it. Yep. Uh, cuz that's basically what they've kind of worked themselves into. If they can find uh, if they can find that that competitiveness that they got with Rainbow Six Siege and the the gameplay dynamic, I'm not saying that they can do this, but the gameplay dynamic that um, Blizzard got with Overwatch, and they can put those two things together, and it be free to play. It'd be game over in terms of what they would be able yeah. to accomplish. Like, and that might not be till like 2024 or twenty twenty five. But I think that you know, like in terms of patches and balancing, like Ubisoft does a really good job. Yeah, and it, this will probably be their future. Like they already said, like you know, working yeah. on free to play games. Um, 
we'll just have to i guess you know if you don't want them to support or if you don't want them to move to like a free-to-play company i guess you have to you have to dive into far cry 6 and buy it just to show them that there's still a market for that which there is uh, yeah. but they can definitely be profitable if they i mean if they're already profitable they can definitely make more profits if they they get a free-to-play game to actually take uh because hyperscape just didn't do it for them right uh that's all i have for news uh there was some other minor stuff but that was like the the big stuff obviously e3 is happening next week uh you guys should hear from us a couple times next week so yeah i think we're we're planning to at least do two episodes next week based on how the schedule is working out for for e3 and we'll i'm looking forward to it i like uh we'll have like what ubisoft saturday xbox on sunday and then Monday, Tuesday is just like whatever the fuck the ESA is yeah, Square, doing Square for Yeah, Square's throwing some stuff in there too now, like this week. Square, yeah. Square threw something in there. So there'll definitely be some things that we might take two or three, two, three or four like announcements over two days and do an episode and then do another two, three or four announcements over a couple of days and do an episode. Yeah, yeah. And that's why Dave got sick this week. He just needed to get it out of his system before next week. So it'll it's, be nice you know and what? Healthy. It's better. I'll take this this week if I got to record two or three times next week. To, to I'm off work next week, too, because I'm always off yeah. this week. So to feel good, like this sinus infection like kicked my ass. Um, yeah. So in terms of like what we're playing and watching as we move on to that, um, as many of you know, I said last week, my son got engaged and his fiance was here. Um, and so she was in town. So we spent some time getting ready for her. We went to Cedar Point in Ohio. Yeah, I went to Cedar Point when I wasn't 100%. Um, the theme park in a pandemic wasn't terrible. Uh, near the end of the pandemic, obviously. But uh, um, then um, we, so I wasn't really, you know, she was here um, and we were working on the house and then I was working and we were out of town. So I really didn't play much of anything at all. Um, I did rearrange my office again because um, I got a different desk and I'm back to, less monitors than I had before. And then I was messing with my gaming PC, updating that a little bit, downloaded Mass Effect. So I got that far. <laughs> um, had to sign back into my Origins account and stuff that I had before. Um, I did on the trip to and from Cedar Point. It's about a two and a half hour drive uh, from our house. I uh, did start listening to Jason Schreier's new book, um, Press Reset. Um, it's pretty good. It's I don't think it's as good as his first one. Um, I think the storytelling in the first one for each game was much better this one. Um, he spent a lot of time in the first two or three chapters, like connecting all the chapters together, which I'm not usually mm-hmm. like as big of, I, I'm not, as, it's not what I was expecting. It's not necessarily that I'm not a fan of it, but as they were talking about how people move from company to company and how, um, he spent a lot of time like talking about 2K studios, um, in terms of like, uh, with Ken Levine and Bioshock and Bioshock 2. I'm only like, I think we're in chapter three or four, so um, there's just a lot of connecting to it, but I, I really like um, hearing more about the game development world, and um, I don't have the patience or the time to, to. I have the time, but I definitely don't have the patience to read read a book. So I'm listening to the audiobook book uh, on Audible, um, and it's 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 okay. Um, so if you're sitting there going back to you got a long commute to and from work, and you don't have DDG DDG to listen to, like I recommend that. So, uh, and I watched just crap stuff on tv because i didn't feel well like another um just terrible shows terrible movies like i'm sick i don't care (laughs) yeah um for me it's nothing new it's just biomutant and knockout city like knockout city is just the i have 20 30 minutes to play something so i play a couple rounds of knockout city still enjoying it i was happy to see the uh ea announced that there's been five million players to knockout city that's cool uh since launch which is nice uh Never have an issue uh, finding a game. Don't really load into any games where I'm missing people. I think that only happened once on like launch day, where I was lo- loaded into That's a two a team of server, two instead of three. Issues, yeah. yeah, yeah. But since then, I haven't had a game where I loaded into a lobby with less than the required amount of people. Uh, so still having fun with that. Uh, trying to like get teammates to actually like do more like. Uh, I think uh, Chris Penwell from Active uh, Quest, he he mentioned that like the community doesn't pass the ball, like the players don't pass the ball, which is like very important in the game because uh, it charges the ball up immediately when you pass it to someone. Oh, interesting. And, you think, does the game do a good job of telling that to you? 
Um, it does early on, like if you actually do the tutorial that they like load you into right away. But if you skip the tutorial, then, okay. you know, uh, they should have made it unskippable, but I think they just wanted people to play right away. Yeah. But it's one of those things where like you, the other person doesn't even need to ask for it. If they're in view and you hit the pass button, you'll immediately throw the ball to them and charge it. And they, in my experience, even when I'm not using voice chat, if people see that and you do it enough to them, they start to actually do it throughout the game. Like, if we get our ass kicked in the first round, second round, I'm just passing the ball constantly, and then they get the hang of it, and then I notice they start passing the ball back to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a very important feature that not a lot of people are using, uh, and once you use it, it, it helps significantly when, when you're playing. Uh, I'm still playing Biomutant. Uh, I'm enjoying it because I'm taking Biomutant as, like, a RPG from, like, the PS2, PS3 era <laughs> in terms of, like, scale. Um I, I will agree uh, after putting way more time in it. Uh, like, I think you mentioned that you didn't really like the way the voice work worked with, like, the narrator and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I didn't mind it. But, like, six, eight hours into the game, I'm starting to be like, I'm kind of tired of how this <laughs> they released how the voice a huge acting works. patch this week, though. Yeah, they did. Yeah. And it that, sounds that's like they've what, already, like, like, dealing with some narrative issues and pacing issues, which I'll be really curious to what they do. That's kind of a hard mechanic to change. Yeah, it definitely is, uh, but it's one of those scenes where, like, I was playing for, like, probably, like, my longest session. It was, like, a three-hour three, three hour session. I've been playing everything else in, like, one, two-hour chunks up to that point, but it was a three-hour session where I started to skip cutscenes or dialogue sections just because I was like, I don't, I don't want to hear this. Just let me dig it through. Uh, but I'm still enjoying uh, that game uh, a lot, and I, I will probably end up finishing it, but uh, it's just taking me a little bit longer than I, I thought. Uh, especially it's been so fucking hot in Chicago. So I've just been kind of when I get home from work uh, and my work doesn't have like air conditioning. Uh, so it's one of those things no, where I get home from your work has air conditioning. They just don't really care about the temperature in the building. Yeah. No, I, my section just yeah. is nowhere near air conditioning vent. Right. Uh, and even then they don't, they don't give a shit right. uh, about the store. Uh, so it's hot as hell uh, when I get home and I just end up watch watching random garbage uh like right now not garbage but just like the stuff i've kind of seen before just because it's comfort stuff so right now watching uh the terminator sarah connor chronicles show again um and then watching adventure time so com two completely different things but both dealing with post-apocalyptic stuff yeah. so watching both those uh as like comfort tv uh because it's just too damn hot to do anything uh but that's it for me Hoping to like actually dive into Mass Effect because I haven't really yeah. had the energy to get lost in Mass Effect. Um, but this week's Ratchet and Clank, so yeah, Ratchet and Clank to... and E3. So you might hear from us yeah. a lot in the next fourteen days. So yeah, yeah. So I plan to, especially hearing Ratchet and Clank's like ten to twelve hours or like ten to fifteen, depending on who you're talking to and how crazy they are for trophies. Yeah. Sounds perfect for me. Yeah, like Especially, I could do like, that if in I like can, two, three sessions. If I sessions. can start that game on a Saturday or Sunday while I'm on vacation and be done by like Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm a hundred percent for it. So yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that, and we'll probably record a special episode for that once both of us are finished. Uh, but that that is it for me. All right. Uh, questions from the community using hashtag Ask Digital Days. Uh, Stefan writes: Do you miss going to E3 in person, or do you like the fact that you can sit in the comfort of your own home and watch it? Um, I miss going in person. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like both for me. Like, I miss going in person just because I like the adventure of just, like, you you, you kind of ha you have a schedule, but you're also trying to do whatever you can in between, like, appointments. And I love that aspect of just, like, all right, what are we doing tonight? Uh, I have an hour to kill between appointments. Let me see if I can, like, finesse another appointment somewhere else. <laughs> and just all that craziness. And then, like, seeing people, even if, even if they're, like, PR people and other uh like journalists that i i've i've seen before talked to before and all we do is like a five minute conversation between appointments i miss that yeah like interaction or when you run into like the same person 10 different times through your like 30 to 50 appointments you have that week and then you just like recap what you saw and what they saw and then if they saw something different then you're just like oh shit i gotta go find that i i miss that stuff mm -hmm. uh, but it's also really nice to just sit back and watch a, a stream on your tv uh for some of that stuff uh but yeah i, I miss in person 
Um, yeah, I, I agree. Um, like, yeah, just the networking, especially with like it selfishly as DDG is so young, it'd be a great networking opportunity that we haven't had the opportunity for yet. Um, and then just, I, I have a harder time with it as well. Like emails and, you know, text messages and back and forth just isn't as personal as a face to face conversation. Um, you yeah. Know, so also it's funny just watching people embarrass themselves at these <laughs> events too. You know, when, when you go to like an Ubisoft party and you see like a respected journalist just drunk out of their mind or something, or <laughs> you just see like the YouTubers that are acting like assholes. That's very fascinating yeah. to watch. Like me and Dave have definitely seen some like asshole influencers acting up and that's <laughs> really fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, I, I miss that. Um, all right, next question. I think you deleted the name from this. I don't know if this is. Oh Stephen. no, it's Stefan asked two questions. Okay, so, so Stefan's second one. Will you be uh, tr treble dipping on GTA Five, PS Five slash whatever the new Xbox version is? Uh, I bought the PS Three and PS Four versions, completed the story twice. Not sure if I can do it three times, unless the expanded part is amazing. I did double dip <coughs> on GTA. Even though I didn't finish GTA on uh, PS3, and then I didn't finish it on PS4, I think I stopped around the same spots. Uh, I don't think I will get it on PS5. The expanded part has to be completely insane, and if the expanded aspect is just multiplayer related, I don't care. Right. Like, <laughs> I, I don't need. To I didn't buy it. Period. So, um, those games are again in the in the realm of gaming that it sells really well i respect really well i've tried to mess with them a little bit and i just it's just not me so um yeah so you'll buy it for 70 dollars then <laughs> when it comes out on ps5 uh, yeah so all right uh that's it for the show lighter show this week which is fine by me because i apologize again for the sound of my voice i'm just trying to tough it through as best as i can um all the social accounts are in the show notes main account is at digital days pod on twitter Michael's is at the first M at the first MJC. Mine is at Good Dave Hunt. Facebook group, Discord servers are all in the show notes as well. And Patreon, uh, Patreon tiers, patreon.com slash digital days gaming. Um, One dollar tip jar, three dollar Discord access, five dollar twenty four hour early access to the regular show, and seven dollars gets you a monthly bonus episode. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us this week and. Uh, just be ready for a whole bunch of stuff next week. Hopefully we get to talk about a lot of cool things and, and have a good time because I'm ready after like six months for something to be really, really exciting and new and innovative and cool. So. And that is not happening next week. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just, you're going to see a disappointed Dave yeah, next week. I just hope we hear about something coming out this holiday that we don't know about. That's what, even if it's just two games. Yeah. So hopefully right. something. I hope everyone has a great week. Keep moving forward. Don't be a dick. Dave, get some rest.